I've ridden this 2022 BMW K1600 GTL for nearly a month and put over 1,600 miles on it. So do I think this is a better motorcycle than my 2018 Honda Goldwing? Well, we're going to find out. Welcome to my comparison of the 2022 K1600 GTL to the 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour DCT. Now, it might seem unfair to compare a 2022 BMW to an older Goldwing, but I'll take into consideration any changes that have been made to the newer Goldwings, and I'll comment accordingly. As I stated previously in other videos, BMW loaned me this K1600 so that I could review it for my YouTube channel, but they are not sponsoring the video. They didn't pay me to say wonderful glowing things about this motorcycle. This video does, however, have a sponsor, and that is Lidlocks. So I want to take a second to thank Lidlocks for stepping up and making these BMW K1600 review videos possible. Now the way I'm drawing my conclusions is by breaking both motorcycles down into 58 or 59 different categories. And I'm going to give a point in each category to either the BMW or the Honda based on which motorcycle I think is best in that particular category. And by the way, this is not a fair comparison. These are simply my ratings based on my riding experiences, my observations. And at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you which of these motorcycles I think is the best and for whom. And will I buy a BMW? So let's get started. Now I'm going to start with styling, but because styling is so subjective, it's a matter of personal taste, I'm going to give a point to both bikes because I personally think they're both good looking bikes with modern styling. When it comes to seat comfort, however, BMW wins hands down. My K1600 was equipped with the Option 719 seat, but I think that's just a difference in the the seat cover and the color of the seat. I uh, don't think it has any difference in the padding. And when it comes to seat options, BMW gets another point because you can get your K1600 fitted with a lower or a taller seat. And I'm not sure, but I don't even think there's an additional charge for this. Now, if you're a BMW guy and you know the answer to that, please put it in the comments down below. You know, Honda used to offer a $1,000 optional seat for the Goldwing, but it was basically the same seat with just a different cover. And I don't even think they offer that anymore. In spite of a more comfortable seat, however, when it comes to leg room, at least for someone like me at six foot two, my Goldwing has just a bit more than the K bike. I was so cramped on the BMW that the bottom of my jeans would continually ride up over the tops of my boots. The K1600 does have a better windshield out of the factory, and wind protection is better than the OEM Honda windscreen. Now, it's not as good as my F4 Customs on my Goldwing, but it's certainly better than the OEM Honda windshield. So what about lights? Now, both bikes have all LED lighting. The K1600 even has this very sophisticated adaptive headlight unit that kind of tilts as the rider leans into the turns, and it can even move up and down as the bike accelerates or decelerates. I mean, a lot of engineering has gone into this headlight. However, after multiple rides in the dark, I kind of feel like my Goldwing lights up the road better. The Beamer seems to throw a lot of light up high. And as I ride through my neighborhood, I can see the tops of the trees illuminated. But the Goldwing throws the light straight out onto the road. Also, I'm not a huge fan of the front turn signal placements on the K1600. I think they'd be more visible if they were on the front of the rear view mirrors. And lastly, none of the hand controls are backlit on the BMW. So Goldwing gets the win on lighting. Now, both bikes do have really good rear view mirrors, and the BMW even has this little blind spot magnification on the edge of the mirrors. At all speeds on both bikes, the mirrors are vibration free. 
Now, as for the dash, you have to love that big, bright TFT screen on the new BMW. But when it comes to easily accessing information on the dash, I still think the Goldwing design has an edge. While it's not as futuristic, I consider it to be better. On my Goldwing, I can always glance at the dash and see my engine temperature, my fuel gauge, my tire pressure. On the K1600, I always seem to find myself having to use the hand controls to scroll through various screens and menus to find some of this basic information. For example, I never did figure out how to easily change radio stations on the BMW while I'm riding. And the BMW does not show you if your trunk or one of your saddlebag lids is open. When it comes to navigation, the BMW relies on the BMW Connected app and your smartphone. No smartphone, no navigation. It worked okay, uh, but if I were willing to spend more time perhaps learning all the ins and outs, I'm sure it'd be okay. But as bad as it is, the Goldwing at least has a satellite navigation built in. And honestly, I'm not a fan of either system, but Goldwing gets a point for having a built-in satellite navigation system. Now, the Bluetooth connectivity on the BMW is far superior than the Goldwing. Pairing a smartphone or a headset is very straightforward, and the connections are very reliable. My Senna headset connected every time I started up the Beamer. Now, I can't say that for my Goldwing. There's something lacking in Honda's Bluetooth. The same Senna headset connects every time to the BMW, but I have to turn off the Senna and turn it back on a couple of times to get it to connect to the Goldwing. BMW also has a better system for storing and connecting the smartphone. A smartphone cubby above the dash has a fan to keep the phone cool in hot weather, and the windshield closes when the bike is turned off, making that cubby a secure place. Now, the Goldwing forces you to put your phone into a cheap piece of foam in a hot center pocket that can't even be locked. What about hand controls? Well, the BMW has very, very few switches and relies heavily on that TFT screen and the menu system to choose different options. The main control wheel gives you the ability to navigate through those menus. The Goldwing has more physical switches and buttons, more traditional, all of which are backlit. By the way, I kind of struggled with this one because I'm used to the way the Goldwing works. But after about a week with the BMW, I started to get used to how that system works as well. So I'm going to say the interface is a wash. The Goldwing does get a point, though, for offering Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This isn't even an option on the BMW. And as bad as the radio is on the Goldwing, it's even worse on the K1600. The Goldwing comes with standard with four speakers. There's only two front speakers on the BMW. The Goldwing in this case is the best of the worst. And even though the home link option on the Honda is way overpriced and overly complicated to install, at least Honda does offer it as an option. BMW doesn't. So it's been a pretty close comparison up till now. How will the Goldwing's boxer engine and the DCT compare to the K1600's 160 horsepower high revving engine? Well, we're about to get into performance, so don't go away. Now, unlike the radio comparison, where both bikes are really substandard, when it comes to the engines, both of these bikes have excellent power plants. That said, they are very different engines with different characteristics, and I think they're designed for different riding styles. The BMW's inline six-cylinder is a beast. It sounds like a Formula One race car every time you start it up. This is a performance rider's engine. The Goldwing engine is no slouch, especially when it's mated to the DCT. But it offers a more sedate power with an emphasis on low-end torque. I have to call this a draw because I think both engines are excellent in their own regard. 
Another draw goes to the final drive of both bikes. Now they both use a shaft drive and they're both super smooth. And once again I'm calling it a draw in terms of handling at speed. Both bikes are much more flickable in the twisties than you would expect these big bikes to be. However, the Goldwing gets a point for straight line highway stability because of the way it can shrug off that wind. The Beamer just seems to get tossed around by, uh, by the wind like no other bike I've ever ridden. And for low speed handling, the Goldwing's low center of gravity makes slow turns, parking lot duty, much more manageable. Now what about that six-speed transmission with Shift Assist Pro compared to the DCT? Well, once again, this is going to be subjective, but I'm going with the Honda's DCT. Not only is it a marvel of engineering, it's just a better transmission in my opinion. The BMW six-speed is good, but delivers some kind of unsettling loud clunks when you shift. Neutral can also be tricky to find. Now, I think if you're a manual transmission bigot, the BMW might be a better fit, but for me, it's the DCT. Now, when it comes to stopping these big bikes, the BMW has better brakes, in my opinion. And the Goldwing brakes are very good, but the K1600s are excellent, maybe too good. BMW also has a sophisticated drag torque control, which is basically their term for traction control. All I know is at least BMW explains how their system works. I have no idea how the Honda HTSC or whatever it's called works. So a nod to BMW. As for drive or ride modes, the BMW has three modes. Road is comparable to the Goldwing's tour mode. BMW and Honda both have a rain mode for riding on wet roads, and BMW's dynamic mode is comparable to the GL's sport mode for performance. The Goldwing, however, has a fourth mode, Econ, for fuel savings, so I'm going to give the point to Honda. Honestly, I don't see how anybody can question the superior suspension of the BMW. Now, yes, it's stiffer, it's a sportier ride, but you just get the sense that BMW invested in better suspension components than Honda did. And BMW's dynamic ESA with automatic load compensation is light years ahead of Honda's manual adjustment. To get a Goldwing suspension to compete with this K1600, you're going to have to ride your bike to Georgia and pay max to put a traction suspension on your bike. Now the ride quality on both of these bikes is very good. It's just different. The Beamer ride is sportier. The Goldwing is more plush and relaxed. I say it's a tie. Now I'm referring to the ride for the rider. When it comes to a passenger, the Goldwing offers more comfort in my opinion. The pillion sits up so high on the BMW that wind protection is scant at best. And as for gas mileage, again it's a tie. A combination of highway and city riding on the BMW averaged 41.5 miles per gallon. My Goldwing average is about 41.4 miles per gallon. However, long distance riders are going to appreciate the extended range of BMW's 7-gallon fuel tank. That could add another 40 to 60 miles of range for the K1600 over the Goldwing. Now right now the Goldwing has a slight lead on the BMW, but in the next section of this video things could change. So don't go anywhere. Next we're going to talk about storage, paint quality, fit and finish, and a lot more. The BMW has the best onboard computer system of any bike I've ever ridden. The Goldwing just doesn't come close. On my wing, I have to add a cheap Chinese voltmeter. On the BMW, I can see the voltage through the My Vehicle screen, along with tire pressure, fuel range, engine temperature, and much, much more. My K1600 had the U.S. Premium Package, which includes an alarm system. This isn't even offered by Honda on the Goldwing. 
the overall storage capacity of the K1600 is superior to the Goldwing. The saddlebags are massive on the BMW compared to the Goldwing. Each one of these saddlebags can swallow a full face helmet. And even though the BMW doesn't have any dampers to print, prevent those lids from flopping open, they do include these nice elastic retainers to hold your stuff in. And the saddlebags can easily be removed, which is a cool feature. I'm going to give the Goldwing the best trunk award based on the 61 liter trunk offered on the new 2021 and later models. That's a full 10 liters more than the BMW trunk. Honestly, I did not find that the BMW trunk would hold that much more than my 2018 Goldwing trunk. BMW does get another point for the fact that all of the storage can be locked. Unlike the Goldwing, where the center pocket remains accessible to anyone with a curious finger. I do prefer the cubby storage on the Goldwing to what's offered on the K1600. The Goldwing's side pocket and the center pocket combined can hold more than those two small shelter cubbies on the K1600. However, when it comes to helmet storage, the BMW gets a point for being able to store a helmet in either saddlebag, or if you're creative, you can get them in the trunk as well. When it comes to storing helmets, even on the K1600, if you're like me, you usually have other stuff in your trunk taking up space, especially on a road trip. The saddlebags and trunk are usually full of gear, so storing helmets is always an issue. I mean, what if you ride a bike with no trunk or saddlebag? What do you do with your helmet? Well, Lidlock's Helmet Locks offers a safe, secure, and simple solution to this problem. You can install the Lidlox helmet locks on just about any motorcycle, like I did on this K1600. Installation takes less than 10 minutes. I installed this Lidlox on this bike in a hotel parking lot. And to lock up my helmet, I simply slip the helmet hanger through the D-ring on my helmet, insert it into the Lidlox body, and press that little lock button. Now I know that helmet isn't going anywhere until I unlock it with the provided key. And that's why I also have lid locks installed on my 2018 Goldwing. So, no matter what bike you ride, I encourage you to check out lid locks today. And again, I want to thank lid locks for sponsoring these videos. This K1600 has the Option 719 Mineral White Metallic Paint a $1,900 option. And don't get me wrong, the paint job is amazing. However, I think the fit and finish of my Goldwing is just as good, and it wasn't $1,900 extra. There's more metallic in the Goldwing paint. I mean, it really, really pops in the sunlight. So I'm giving the Honda the nod on fit and finish because I didn't have to pay $1,900 extra to get a beautiful paint job. Now, I know I'm jumping around here a little bit, but let's talk about engine sound. Every time you start up that K1600, you're greeted with a Formula One race car sound. And when you're on the highway at speed, the engine is silent. The Goldwing has this kind of annoying drone that kicks in at about 70 to 72 miles per hour. At least it does on my Goldwing. The Goldwing comes standard equipment with a central locking system for the trunk and the saddlebags. And on my U.S. premium package equipped BMW, it came with central locking. The Goldwing is more elegant in that it can detect when you approach the bike and it unlocks the saddlebags and the trunk automatically. Likewise, it locks them when you walk away from the bike. Now, the BMW requires that you press a button on the hand controls or on the key fob to lock or unlock the storage. And the BMW does give you an audible clunk so you can hear the locks engage or disengage. The Goldwing, on the other hand, is silent, so you never really know when you walk away if the bike is locked up or not. The BMW also flashes the turn signals when the locks are locked or unlocked. And there isn't any such indication on the Goldwing. And finally, the central locking system on the BMW locks all of the cubbies 
while the gold wing leaves the center pocket with no lock. And this is where you're supposed to store your $1,000 smartphone. So that's a point for BMW. Likewise, both bikes have keyless ignition, but the BMW's emergency start procedure is much more elegant than the Goldwing, which is complicated and clunky. Another point to BMW. Wow, BMW is taking quite a lead on the Goldwing. Will the K1600 blow away the Goldwing on points? Or will the GL1800 make a comeback? Well, we're coming down to the last 15 items on my list. You don't want to miss the rest of this video. Both of these bikes have cruise control, and they both work reliably. I prefer the interface on the Goldwing better, but it could just be because I'm used to it. It took me four days and a read of the BMW manual to figure out how the resume function worked on the cruise control. And when you tap the set button on the BMW, it would sometimes increase or decrease the speed by two mile per hour increments instead of one mile per hour, as it's stated on the digital speedometer. The Goldwing seems to be more accurate and it consistently increases or decreases the speed in one mile per hour increments. I'm giving the nod to Honda on the heated seats and the heated grips as well, because both bikes provide good heat, don't get me wrong, but I prefer the Goldwing interface better. The BMW requires that you dig into the menu system to activate the heated grips, while the Goldwing has a simple button on the center console. And the Goldwing wins the battle of the tip-over protection too. Now granted, the 2018 Plus models will only protect against a like a simple drop in a parking lot, but the wing does have engine and saddlebag tip-over bars, and they're pretty nicely hidden. The BMW only offers engine protection bars, and it's an option. There is no tip-over protection for those oversized, expensively painted saddlebags, and I suspect that a simple drop in a parking lot would be an expensive repair job. As for which is easier to keep clean, the Goldwing wins again. And it's no piece of cake, but it's still better than the K1600. There are lots of almost hidden painted surfaces on the BMW that would be nearly impossible to access for cleaning. Even the back of the windshield is covered by a structure that allows dirt and water to accumulate, but not enough room for a cloth so that you can clean it. And what about regular maintenance? Both bikes require lots of plastic to be removed to access the air filter. But only the Goldwing has my maintenance video series to guide you through all of the regular maintenance tasks. So self-servingly, I'm going to say the Goldwing wins on maintenance. Both bikes have hill start assist, and they both work in a similar fashion, and they both work well. I'd say it's a draw. And both bikes also have a reverse feature, even though the reverse on my test bike was not working properly. The Goldwing also has a forward walking gear along with reverse, so I give the point to Honda. The K1600 is equipped with some really nice convenience lighting features. When you turn off the bike, the lights remain on for a period of time, kind of light your way into the house or your garage. And when you turn on the ignition, the lights come on to kind of welcome you. And there is a floor lighting feature that's also pretty cool. It would be unfair to ignore the 1600's Gear Shift Assist Pro feature, which is not available on the manual transmission Goldwing. And this allows the rider to shift through gears 2 through 6 without using the clutch. I prefer the center stand on the Goldwing better. I was not able to get the BMW up on the center stand. I was just afraid of dropping it. The center of gravity is so much higher on the BMW, it just makes it more difficult for me. Because the BMW requires premium fuel, that's going to add to the overall cost of ownership. And well, I have not owned a BMW, I have heard enough stories to convince me that replacement parts dealer maintenance cost, etc., will make the Honda a more affordable bike to own over time. As far as reliability, I am not qualified to score this. I haven't had the bike long enough. I know there's a lot of you that say the Honda is the most reliable bike. 
but I'm sure there are BMW owners out there with 100,000 miles or more on their K bike that would argue for the reliability of the K1600. I don't think there's any question that Goldwing owners do benefit from a larger dealer network, at least in the US and Canada. Now, Europe might be a whole different story. So I'm going to say that Honda gets a point for having a vast dealer network, at least in this country. The last thing I can score is really an intangible. It has nothing to do with the performance or the features of either bike. It has to do with the status that comes from ownership. BMW carries a reputation as a premium automotive brand. And certainly, that mark carries over to their motorcycle brand as well. When someone asks you what type of motorcycle you ride, I'm sure there's a certain amount of pride in telling them, I ride a BMW. I don't know that the Honda really holds that same status. So for status and image, I think BMW gets a point. As you can see, my scorecard has these bikes almost dead even. It's really too close to call. And it's not a question of which bike is the better bike. The question is which bike is better for you. My riding style is more laid back, casual. I put more emphasis on luxury and comfort. To arrive at that goal on my Goldwing has required an upgraded seat, bigger windshield, and a few other little accessories. However, no matter how much I were to spend on that K1600, I just don't think it would feel as comfortable as the Goldwing. On the other hand, a rider who puts more emphasis on performance could find the BMW to be a better fit. It all comes down to what's important to you. Both bikes are very comfortable. Both bikes have great performance. So did you enjoy this video? If so, please click the like button. Do you think I was fair and accurate in my evaluation? If you do or if you don't, let me know in the comments down below. Some of you own a Honda Goldwing, and some of you own a BMW, and there may be some of you out there that own both. So please weigh in with your thoughts and your comments on these various categories. Now, once again, I want to thank BMW for allowing me the opportunity to extensively test and review this K1600 GTL. I hope I can get my hands on an R1250 RT to test in the future. If you've enjoyed my BMW review videos, let me ask you, what other bikes would you like to see me review? Put that in your comments as well. Thanks again for watching, and remember, ride often, but always ride safe.